What's up, guys? Welcome to the Couple Ventures podcast with your host, Mateo Slatrick, and myself, Peter Fendero. This is a podcast where we tackle current health news and hot nursing topics, one conversation at a time. How's it going, Matthew? We're going to put one conversation at a time as a shirt for a, for a brand here for Couple Nurses. But I am doing great. Um, we're going to talk about sleep, and it's kind of funny because I'm running on three and a half hours or three hours and 45 minutes to be exact. But I am doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Hopefully, uh, weather starts to get nicer, but you never know how, how it's going to be in Chicago back in, or how it's going to be in Chicago in March and April. I know last year we had a worse April than, than this year's, or we had a worse April than, than March. So we'll see how, how it goes. But guys, remember to follow us on Instagram, check us on YouTube, give us the ratings, subscribe to our show. Patreon's coming soon in the future. And just thank you for tuning with us. Thank you for listening to us talk and hope you guys are having a good time. So every single time you bring up the weather. So now I'm kind of curious. People are going to think you're the Chicago weatherman. I, I am, man. Tomorrow, slightly clear skies with a high temperature of 27 with a low of 15. Mean temperature is going to be about 18 degrees. I'll recommend staying inside. No chance of snow. But it's going to be a nice wind breeze coming from the north north end of, the, of Michigan. And the police is coming for you guys. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Question, what's one thing you learned this week? One thing I learned this week. I don't know that I hate swimming. I hate swimming. I already hate swimming. Because I suck at it. I was never good at it, and I'm still not good at it. And I was thinking about going swimming, but then I'm like, I hate swimming, so I'm not going to go swimming. So I did not end up going swimming. I'm so sorry to hear that, man. I'm actually Pisces, and I love to swim. And I don't know if I told you the story, but when I was nine years old, my dad kind of told me down to go down a slide in Wisconsin Dells, and I ended up drowning, man. What happened is I kind of... I couldn't swim, so I went underwater and I did the frog, man. And I frogged my way to um to safety. And then the then the lifeguard jumped in and you know the whole um Baywatch thing. Damn, did he have to uh, like resuscitate you? Did you have like uh were you unconscious or were you just no, scared? No, man. I'm well see, so I didn't drown, but I did not a swim and I was in the water. So what what would be that considered? Drowning? I don't know. Maybe just I was just, struggling I to know. swim at sinking. that time. It's considered sinking. You you fucking sink. Okay, so I was sinking, and then I kind of swam to safety. Oh, well, I'm glad you're safe, man. Is that why like, you're, you kind of just like randomly pass out sometimes like a goat? <laughs> That'd be funny, man. It's, it, it's a YouTube video, right? The goats just pass out? Yeah, I think it's because of – maybe that's a fear. I don't know, but they, they do pass out. That is right. They have a fear. So if you just scare the goat, you'll just flop. That's what I do sometimes. So I work – you know, I have a bunch of have a bunch of safety precautions to tell the nurses, you know, because I don't want to just drop dead. <laughs> we'll make a topic. Why do why do goats faint for next week? So Matt, what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna talk about the weird side effects of not getting enough sleep of six hours and less. And then we're gonna talk about a Chilean study from 2016, how it banned specific food labels, food drinks, sh- sugary drinks, I should say, and they labeled their food high sugar, high fat, high saturated fat. They forced it on all their packages and actually improved the consumption of sugary drinks. It's a little ironic that we're going to talk about. Did I say decrease? Decrease what? Uh, Uh, Sugary drinks consumption. Yes, you did. Perfect. I wanted to correct myself there. Good. It's kind of ironic because Matt over here is working on about three hours of sleep. We're going to talk about the negative effects of like sleep deprivation for the most part. And Matt's over here straight from work. Not straight from work. He came from work, took a little nap, and uh, woke his ass up to do this episode. See, and you can tell because I had to question myself whether I said something. So am I having amnesia, short-term um, loss here of memory? Maybe he might be. I mean, it could be, it could be also a proponent of you almost drowning that one day. Oh, uh, 12 years ago? It's yeah. kind of funny. I could technically use that again. It's crazy how people create stories for themselves, right? Like with the anxiety. Or did I tell you? I told you about that guy in Oakland, how he had a phobia of... Ca- being claustrophobic because his brother locked him in a freaking um, in a room when he was in, when he was eight. So I mm-hmm. could technically use that story and be a victim of it my whole entire life, but we ain't, we ain't on that shit here. You should have, man. I've been trying to get my hands on some Xanax, dude. So you should... <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You it's cool. Continue, man. Yeah, you I'll give you some just... Xanax, bro. <laughs> no, I should tell your doctor. Be like, hey, doctor, I almost drowned 12 years ago, and you know, ever since then, I've been have this crazy fear of water, and I'm going to Miami. And, in a few weeks. So I was wondering if, you know, you could give me some Xanax because there's gonna be a pool. So, you know, like what, 0.5 Q2, you know, PR will be cool. 
Just write yourself the damn order. I'm pretty sure that it's going to happen. Do you just come in there sweating, anxious? You know how anxious people have these big eyes? Sometimes they're like looking around because you can tell their mind is just going. I could pull it off. Oh, for sure. If like kids could pull off like for Adderall and stuff, I'm sure you could pull it off like a phobia of, of, of water. Do it. All righty. So let's talk about the study. So the impact of the study was to evaluate the impact of packages. And it's crazy how the Chilean government actually did something. And here in the United States, we don't go to those extreme measures. One, because, you know, our political systems, the money gets given to these politicians, from, probably from these huge uh, food companies. But what happened is they had a giant obesity problem. And basically three quarters of Ch a Chilean adults and more than half of their children were beginning to be overweight. The healthcare officials warned people and they basically went ham man. They, they, what's it called? They, so they banned advertisement in schools. So, you, and they banned consumption of sugar drinks in schools. So there's no vending machines, anything to um, basically make these kids just kind of, you know, steal some money from the parents and buy a seven up and all that. Yeah, we're slowly doing that here in the U.S. I know a lot of schools also have uh, like vending machines banned, like sodas banned. I know my grade school doesn't allow sodas and vending machines. And I'm pretty sure my high school also um, doesn't allow like soda pop in the vending machines. So they're definitely trying to cut back on sugar here. But stuff isn't or the cutting back isn't as drastic as it is in Chile because Chile had a, had a cool idea, right, with, with the labeling. Yeah. And see, I feel like in America, what we do instead is like, hey, let's just tax the sugar more. And then, you know, we as Americans are just getting pissed like, OK, well, we're not really doing anything significant. You guys are just making more money off the consumption of what we're, you know, taking, which is bad. It's like alcohol. You know, they increase taxes and they think that people are going to not consume alcohol. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. So here they raise taxes. I think the idea that Chile had the way they combated their, their obesity epidemic going on is is what they did is they just increase the size of certain labels like each product was labeled like high sugar or high carb or you know high sodium it had actually had these big labels because because here like we are proponents of like a low sodium diet for our, our cardiac patient population but there's nothing really on the container that actually says like low sodium there, there is occasionally like a small little stamp that says low low sodium or no salt added but you have to actually look on, on the back to find the actual con content of the, the sodium. But what Chile did is they made like huge labels on their products saying, you know, high sodium or, or high carb or high fat. And that looks like it discouraged a lot of people from, from buying those products. And I believe that's a really good idea because as consumers, we, we look at products that we buy, but not so much the labels. So if we put a big stamp on it that says, you know, high carb, high sugar, I guarantee people are going to be against buying it. And I think like the reason why we don't have it here is because, like, look who's kind of fueling the economy. It's like these companies like Kellogg's, these other companies that make all these cereal brands that are high sugar, where they know if they label something high sugar, high carb, high fat, or high sodium, then people are not going to buy it. So their sales are going to drastically decrease. And clearly, our government, you know, is on their side saying that we don't really need those. But in Chile, that's a great idea. I think we should implement something like that here. And I think it would definitely make everybody here healthier than, than they are. And it's kind of, you know, if you work with um, cardiac patients and you're, you're, you're talking about sodium, you probably have the same story when a patient comes in and fluid overload. What's the story that he tells you? Hey, you know, uh, Susie Q, have you been consuming sodium? And they're going to say no, but yet they're consuming canned food and stuff like that. Yeah, just think, just look at it. Like imagine, you know how much like people consume pasta. Pasta is like almost a staple food in everyone's one's home. Imagine if we labeled pasta high carb. I guarantee there's going to be a dramatic decrease in pasta sales because we, as we all know, pasta is really high in carb. It has like 40, 50 grams of carbs. And that's, and that's a lot. You know, some people that do low carb, they limit themselves to like 20 carbs a day, 50 carbs a day. And one meal of pasta is going to be your whole carb intake. And just, just taking that into consideration, look how much like consumption would decrease in pasta. That's why these companies are scared for these kind of labeling to, to be out. They don't, they don't want it. They don't want that kind of kind of labeling like as, as consumers we should definitely push for, for this but as like a company like kellogg's or you know whatever a company are else there that makes these kind of things they're not gonna be a good proponent for it you know it blows my mind that for example and i don't want to call out like kobe or something but if a giant celebrity passes away we have freaking people in the streets like not celebrating but like you know grieving and 
giving all the support, but yet like we're not like joining forces together saying, wow, man, our freaking food labeling system is corrupt. Like we're not even being told that, hey, they could sneak in 0.5 gram of a saturated fat per, you know, per serving size. And it's like, what the heck, man? They're not they're not telling us the truth here. But yet we could, you know, go in the streets and hoorah, hoorah, this guy passed away. But that's just me. It's because the news, like you don't see that kind of stuff on news. You don't, you don't see on the news like Fox News or ABC or or CNBC saying that, hey, did did you know that 0.5 of saturated fat doesn't have to be reported on you know your products? You you don't see that happening because like it's all it's all funneled together. Like who owns these 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 news corporations? I'm sure these big companies own own the news and they don't want their name being tarnished or drive their sales down because of of better education for the consumer. It's just like, for example, when Trump announced that speech about the coronavirus, instead of like the news station is focusing on the, the you know, disease, the disease, the virus, what we could do, is there a vaccine? They're like, look how Trump delivered this speech. He basically said, we're all fine. And that's just, what are they targeting? They're targeting just like hype, like whatever is selling, man, it's, um, it's freaking weird. But anyways, um, what this study basically concluded is after they banned the labeling, Sugary drink consumption dropped twenty five percent within eighteen months. That's oh, wait they 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 banned labeling. I thought they promoted like big size labels. That's what I meant. They so they banned specific things like the the advertisement and being able to buy junk food in schools and sugary you know um, vending machines, and they added the labels for the food just for clarification. So yeah, twenty five percent drop in eighteen months, and then they also concluded that in the same period, five percent increase it was of um, People bought more bottled water and less um, like soft drinks and drinks with them added fruit juices. Not bad. I think that could totally be open on like a large scale. Like here in the United States, we have a drastically larger population in the United States than, than they do in Chile. And this could totally work here. I guarantee we would get the same results or even better because I feel like here in the United States, we have more uh, like health conscientious people compared to, to, to Chile. I feel like if they label, if they put these big labels on, then I guarantee you we would be greatly healthier as a population here in the uh, United States. It's also messed up because, you know, we're, we're fueled by consumerism in America. Like, dude, off topic, but like U.S. kids are getting advertised on average. I wonder how much to actually consume junk food. Like that should be completely banned. Why? Like if you're under the age of, let's just say, a teenager, why are you getting hyper-targeted to buy specific foods? Like that's messed up, dude. And these kids... Earlier and earlier, they're on social media and they're consuming, you know, they're getting Lay's commercials and whatever. I don't know what the kid is. It's funny. It, <laughs> she's like, yeah, don't get old, guys. I got a bunch of diaper commercials on Facebook getting advertised. This charge nurse told me yesterday I'm cracking up, dude. And we're just hyper-targeted and we're not even realizing it. And it's affecting kids probably negatively for sure. Oh, I guarantee it's influencing them negatively. First of all, it gets them... Um, more addicted to to sugar and carbs and chips and snacks like that, and plus they're also getting associated to to that to that brand, you know, which is another plus, because sometimes you get we get like like um, nostalgia from eating something that we that we ate back when you were you were younger, like like Nutella. Like I remember eating Nutella when I was younger, and whenever time I eat Nutella, like I feel good because it's like something that I enjoyed as a kid and kind of makes me makes me feel like a kid again, just because you know you put Nutella on it kind of brings back those memories. And while you were getting ready, I actually looked something up and, and it shows it's related to the ads. Yes. Whenever you want to feel like a child, do you just whip whip up like a scoop of Nutella on your finger and you just suck on it, huh? Nutella and peanut butter. And you know what else? That peanut butter and jelly that you get in Aldi that's in one jar. Like, you know how it's like a swirl and half it's peanut butter, half it's jelly? Sure. Yeah, I remember it, like that used to be my go-to. My parents rarely got it. Every time they would get it, they would eat that within like, like a few days because it was, it was so good. Well, back over here on our advertising, I looked a few things up while you were getting ready, and it showed this this one little study that I looked at. Actually, it's supposed to be a, a huge study back done back in 2018, I believe. That's what I have written here. But it showed that kids that were age 11 to 19 that were shown one extra ad, like ad as in like a like a sugary ad, like a ad for peanut butter, ad for chips, lace. They're actually prone to eating 350 more calories a day than person that have, has not seen that ad. So this kind of just shows that if you increase the, the amount of junk food ads kids see, they're more prone to eating more. 
which is not a not a good thing. It's not eating more as in eating like fruits or vegetables. It's eating that advertisement, eating something associated with that. So they see a glaze commercial, they're more prone to grabbing a bag of chips instead of grabbing like a bag of carrots or or fruits. That's that's mind blowing, dude. I feel like there's definitely going to be a backlash with like social media, even advertisements. And it's funny because you know. The way our podcast is growing, we have to use ads as well on social media to kind of help spread the good vibe. But like, dude, in this aspect, like you're, you know, you're making kids sicker. So I feel like there's going to be something that's going to happen in the future. They're going to ban specific advertisements, just like they banned commercials for cigarettes on TV. It's eventually going to happen maybe for food. Food? I don't know, man. There's too much money. There's too much money involved for that shit, to be honest. Yeah, no way. No way. Like, look at the Super Bowl commercial. Like, how much food... Like how much uh, food commercials you see during that. There's no way we're gonna get rid of any kind of kind of commercials. I could see happening is I could see those big big stamps saying something is high in carb, high in sugar. But ads, nah, they're gonna go out, go away anytime soon, man. I agree, man. Do you want to wrap this one up? Uh yeah. So guys, we went over uh, this big study that was done in Chile. So Chile had an issue of majority of the population was becoming obese. Their kids are becoming obese. Their adults. I think it was 75% of the population was considered obese. So they decided to combat this epidemic by not allowing schools to have sugary snacks and sodas. And they also added labels, big giant labels on foods, labeling them high sugar, high carb, high fat as a way to try and combat this, this issue. And studies show that they succeeded. So hopefully we get something like that incorporated here in the United States. But guys, just be aware of what you, what you eat. Don't buy it because of an ad you see actually be conscious of what's actually in, in that kind of food. What's what are the ingredients and what's the actual nutrition label say? Perfect. Let's talk about the side effects of sleeping six hours or less. You wrapped it up so well, Peter. I thought we we're going to end the show right there, man. I mean, we can we, 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 do that. We fooled you guys. So two episodes ago, we mastered sleep hygiene, why it's important. We talked about your nighttime and morning routines and how it affects sleep directly. But now we're going to talk about the weird side effects of not sleeping enough. And as you know, usually when you get busy, me and Peter do it all the damn time. I'm doing it currently today as I'm recording this. I'm sacrificing sleep because I need to do things in my schedule. I need to sit down and record. And what I do, I slept four hours. I have to run some errands. I sleep less. I think night shift neglects sleep hardcore. And CDC basically states that one of third Americans don't get enough sleep. And it's associated with negative, negative side effects that we're going to talk about. And if you are that person that's part of that statistic, I think you should fix your sleep patterns, cycle, get some damn freaking sleep, man. It's going to feel much better. Most definitely. Like we could survive on like low amount of sleep only for, for so long. Like it's okay to have a night where you sleep four hours, you sleep five hours. It's okay to have a few of those. The thing is, it's going to catch up on you. So you can't have that going on consistently. Like compared to Matt, me, I slept great. I probably went to bed around, I want to say 12.30, probably like 11.30, 12.30 ish. Woke up at 7.30, you know, can't, can't complain. Feel great. Did a, did a bunch of stuff around, around the house. I don't feel groggy. And compared to Matt, where he's got to work four hours of sleep. To begin, to begin with, he just worked 12 hours and he just took a little, a little bit of a nap. And now he's kind of paying for it. But it's okay because he's a grown ass man and he could take it once in a while. Right, Matt? Exactly, dude. No, it's not going to kill me. But yeah, I am feeling a little bit foggy. And it's funny, we're talking about sleep. I kind of had a, I was thinking about, you know how you get off night shift and you have breakfast beers? Dude, sleep deprivation plus a beer or two before bed. Um, it's a night shift thing, guys. Like, yeah, It's a good man. time. It's a good time, but you freaking, you get drunk quick, man. You shouldn't be driving. So nurses out there to get breakfast beers at night shift, don't do it, man. It's dangerous. But once in a while, right, Petey? Ain't going to hurt. Once in a while, dude. Just like that box of chocolates once in a while. Maybe not a box, but like I mean, a few, like a handful. But I actually know, I actually know nurses that, that would um, come from work, get breakfast beers, and work the next night. Like, they're fucking down. And that, like, they're fine to, like they're fine the next shift. Damn. That's, that's mm. pretty – it's crazy. Is that it's even like – I'm not saying is that legal, but can you technically – I mean, I'm pretty sure alcohol by then wears off. Like you can't get tested if you came to work. Yeah, I mean, they're not drunk. I mean, it's like a one or two beers. Like, you know, one or two beers I've hurt nobody. Mm-hmm. I mean, Unless wait. one or two beers away from alcohol poisoning, then it might be an issue. But just starting off, it'd be fine. Sleep it off. Since we're talking about alcohol, do you want to go over 
the not twos on Tinder. For example, ladies, if you are getting into a car with a stranger, even an Uber driver, make sure there's, you know, that lock thing is not locked on the door when you get in the back. What's what do you mean? number two, Peter? What are we locked in? I'm talking shit. Um, so, for example, you know how you open a door? Yeah. And there's a safety. There's a child lock. So if, if you're getting into an Uber, you should check to see if it's not like lock. If it says locked, that means when you close the door, you can't get out. You can't open it. The person has to open it from the outside. That's Do all a, cars that's, have child lock? I, I think my car has child lock. You probably never looked, man. It's, um, never it's, looked. A, it's a lever on the actual door panel itself, usually. Well, shit, next time I get an Uber, I'm going to check because I ain't trying to get my pretty ass abducted. I know they're gonna they're gonna pull the they're gonna pull your hair for sure, PD. They're like, oh man, lush is blonde. to the podcast? Yeah, there would be no podcast. Over there, nobody would watch you more because I'd be gone. You know, I'd be doing like a podcast out of a someone's car trunk. I'm gonna get a painting of you, and then I'm gonna have somebody in the back with like um, like a puppet and just opening up their um their mouth, and I'm gonna lip it. <laughs> That'd be some shit. So, before we get into the weird side effects of sleep, I wanted to cover the four stages of actual sleep, which is um REM non-rapid eye movement and every single stage has a specific effect on you so we're going to start with stage one and you basically go into um, delta waves that's the beginning of sleep and what happens is you start hallucinating a little bit so you might when you're falling asleep you might hear things you might hear like a phone ring or you have those hypo um hypo hypno or the hypno jerks and as you're falling asleep you feel like you're falling and you just wake up and like you're like, what the heck happened? I think that's also like your central nervous system like coming down. I feel like I have those jerks after like a stressful day. I get them all the time, especially like when I'm really tired. When I'm really tired, I'm going to bed and I'm about to sleep hard. I get those majority of the time. Like I just jerk. Usually it's my legs. My legs are my my arm. Sometimes I even flip to sometimes I even flip to the other side, to be honest. After the jerk? Yeah, like I, I jerk so hard sometimes where if I'm laying on my left side. I jerk so hard, I like I, I turn like face down or something. When was when was the last time you jerked? In the dance, you know, I haven't you did the jerk dance in a while. Maybe like a like a wedding. What's Maybe the jerk like, dance? A few months ago, I don't know how to do it. I have I have no idea. Just like a jerk, you know, do the jerk. I don't know how the dance goes, but I'm sure we probably jerked probably at a wedding or at some point in time. A lot probably of jerk, a few months ago. A lot of jerking around, huh? Dude, I, I I love my jerk, man. I like I like beef jerky. I like jerk <laughs> chicken. I like Hawaiian jerk. I like Jamaican jerk, dude. You didn't, that, you didn't jerk mention a physical that. jerk, but nobody has to know about that. Let's nah, get it. What is that? What is that? Jill, bro. Jill. Do you know what Jill is? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not going to tell about. you guys, man. This is um, <laughs> 18 above. Huh? We should make a rated R here. This is going to be Patreon. After hours. Anyways, um, so we're going to get into stage two, guys. So Delta Waves, we call these um, sleep spindles. And we're not yet understanding how this exactly works, but your brain creates something called K complex activities. And this is like shown from an EEG and this suppresses cortisol. It helps you keep you asleep. And also they think that these K complexes in stage two actually take your short-term memory and and stores it into long-term memory. That's what we're thinking. We don't know yet. Stage three is when your brain waves actually slow down. They're called Delta waves. And they basically occur when you're dead asleep, man. This is when actual most sleepwalking occurs. And that's when you talk in your sleep. No idea why. That'd be pretty interesting to find out. And we're going to get into stage four, the last stage. That's basically rapid eye movement. Instead of non-rapid eye movement, stage four is the one with rapid eye movement. Your brain activity basically is awake. Like you have the same wavelength activity as if you're waking doing activities but your body's completely paralyzed. This um, lasts ex- approximately 90 minutes, and then your sleep cycle um, repeats. And as a kicker, people that are curious about this, you don't always jump into one, two, three. Sometimes you go into stage one, stage two. You could jump into one, jump into three, back to two, and then into four. So everybody's um, body's different. And if you want to track your sleep on a whole other level, I recommend the Whoop Band. You could hit us up on Instagram and we'll give you guys a referral code to get your one month free. I guess I hooked them here with an affiliate deal. Yeah, you got my ass too, dude. I just I just subscribed right now while you're talking, man. It's kind of funny because Peter did actually ask for the code. So Peter's going to get that band um, going in. But it's cool because 
you're tracking this stuff and you don't always have the same amount of REM or deep sleep and things like that. So it's, um, it's pretty effective. And the, the app asks you if you're, for example, like if you're using a screen device before bed, because this, um, if you're on your cell phone before bed, you're, you're basically fake. You're basically tricking your brain that with these blue wave uh, wavelengths that, Hey, I'm getting a lot of light and it's messing up your circadian rhythm. That's why they recommend you not using it before bed or like an hour before bed. Yeah. It's pressing melatonin as well. Like the, like, like the light, but with the 90 minutes, so like Matt said, the whole cycle lasts 90 minutes. That's why if you, if you guys heard the prior, prior episodes, it's recommended that you snooze 90 minutes. If you're a person that likes to snooze your, your alarm clock, it's highly recommended that you snooze 90 minutes. So if you got to wake up at seven, you know, put your alarm clock at what was it? Five 30. That's an hour and a half. Is it an hour and a half? Six, three, yeah. So put your alarm clock on at 5.30, and that way you snooze it for 90 minutes, you wake up at 7. And that's better off than snoozing 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before, 20 minutes before. Why? Because you could still get one, one full sleep cycle in before you actually have to wake up. And this kind of already puts a thought in your head of you got to wake up in 90 minutes. So you're going to actually get up better and more quickly compared to you know, keep hitting snooze and then dragging your ass out of bed. I definitely like what you're saying, but personally, how often are you going to have time or how often do you set up your day where you're going to have an hour and a half to snooze? Well, the thing is, like, if you got to wake up at seven, then you set your alarm clock for 530. It's not like you're setting your alarm clock till seven and then waking up at, at you know, 830. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and there's also uh, sleep doctors. I wish we had one on, man. We're going to we're going to be pushing for these guests, guys. And this there's basically different genes when it comes to sleep. So not everybody needs the same amount. We say, oh, you need at least seven hours of sleep. And that's what, you know, that's what we say too as nurses. Well, people have different genes and some people don't need that amount. Um, another, another interesting thing is I would like to know the, is there benefits when you're alternating sleep cycles, meaning you're sleeping four hours one day and then you're sleeping like, let's just say 10. I wonder if there's effects mm. to your brain on that. I'm sure our brain likes consistency more than that kind of a chaos, but like we talked about neuroplasticity before and like we could mold our brains, and our bodies to fit kind of our schedule. Cause I know, especially working night shift, it's, it, is, it is a struggle to kind of flip to a, a day shift life, especially if you work a lot of days in a row or if you, your days are scattered. So what I recommend is you kind of got to figure out how you perform best on what amount of sleep. And just because, you know, six hours is good for you doesn't mean you always got to get six hours. You could get four hours and you could get eight, you get seven. It's never, there's not like one solid number because it doesn't always matter on the length of the time you're sleeping, but also the quality. So sometimes you might be in bed nine hours, but you're tossing and turning and you might have only slept four out of those nine. Just maybe you're feeling sick and you couldn't fall asleep. So yeah, you went to bed at 10 and you woke up at 10 the next day, 12 hours, but you maybe only slept eight or the seven. So the quality also matters. Don't just look, look at the length. Perfect. I love how you brought that up because these past couple of days since I've been here, they're renovating a lot near the area. And I literally had chainsaws waking me up and people are doing construction. So now I actually have to wear these headphones that I'm wearing on my damn head. And I put on noise cancellation. I put some ocean waves because it's so freaking loud. And I actually got like a good eight hours of sleep. But dude, I woke up not rested. I woke up a little bit groggy because... Um, based on the app, I had 11 disturbances that woke me up. So that definitely does make a difference. And plus, you know, you have to redo the, the REM cycles that we kind of get into. Yeah, so what else goes along with, with sleep is dreaming. So we're not really sure why we dream or what the reason of a dream is or where it comes from. But Freud thought that, or his perception on dreaming is it's something in our brain that we have to do or, or it's kind of like our, like our thoughts, but actually act it out. It could be like, like our desires, like some of us have, have certain dreams. It could show us our fears. Maybe if you have a fear of height and you don't know it, you have a dream of you falling. So that could be like, like more of a nightmare than, than a dream. But Freud ultimately thought that our dreams are our unconscious thoughts and desires. I'm not sure how accurate that is. We're not really sure either. Maybe Matt, you know how accurate that is by any chance? No, it's, I don't have a theory myself. I definitely I was listening to a podcast and they basically said deep sleep is the most connected you can be with like your, your spirit in a way where they're in a constant communication. This is more of a spiritual take on it. 
Um, but I, I don't know how we dream. I think there's definitely messages behind it. Personally, when I had things like not happen to me, but I had a dream and then I tried to like think about what it is or it did affect me where I did something different in that day. I can't give you a, like a straight up example right now. But I yeah, think there, usually, we, usually we forget our dreams. So maybe there's a purpose behind them. Maybe there isn't. Uh, it's kind of going to be more of sub subjective. Maybe you're just stressed on making a decision and hey, you have a dream about one of those options. Maybe you should probably go with that option. And it's just, just take dreams in as, as just however you want to take them in. If you want to believe in them, trust them. If you don't, if you just think it's something that our brain does for fun, you know, that's just how it is. But a lot of times I don't remember them. And actually, most of the times I don't remember my dreams. Like, I don't know why some people are, are, that are dreamers can vividly remember their dreams. Me, I rarely can remember them. So like, if you want to remember them, what you should do is set an alarm clock, let's just say 15 minutes earlier, wake up and just like lay in bed. And actually like let like thoughts come into come to you and see what you dreamt about. Because usually we wake up, we just get rolling. You know what I mean? And that's all, yeah. And so the, those wavelengths that you had, they switched and the memories basically disappeared. Yeah. Maybe I could try it. Maybe I maybe I'll try it and I'll, you know, draw it out on a painting or something. Or I'll um I don't know. I'll give it a try. But like I, I, I do have dreams. I think I have dreams. I hope I do. But like I said, a lot of times I wake up. Look at my phone, what time it is, and I just, just get going. I don't really pay attention to what I dreamt of. And I'm gonna, it's not a bad idea. I'm going to start maybe maybe looking at it. I have a, I have an interesting thought. It's probably not thought? that appropriate, but I'm just going to roll with it because I don't give a beep. So you know how men have wet dreams? And what a wet, <laughs> what a wet dream is, is for males, basically, they just ejaculate in bed, correct? Yes. So okay. So thank you for confirming that. <laughs> Um, do women have wet dreams? Like, you know I mean? I've never looked it up. I've never thought of it till right now while I'm recording this damn podcast. That's kind of funny. And I'm sure we have more female listeners and they're probably cracking up. That's okay. We, me and Peter have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. That's, I'm sure they would, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sure there's gotta be some erotic dream that women have that eventually turns them on and then they, you know, orgasm or, or whatever, same, same as guys, but. I have no idea, actually. It's, not a, it's a good thing to look up. I'm going to look up after we, um, you know, after we get done with this. Okay, for sure. So if you're in that one th third category, you should be aware of the, the different um, effects of sleep that we're going to cover. And then the symptoms, you can check them out in the show notes. You know what the health, the symptoms are of chronic low sleep. You're yawning, your mood, you're going to be fatigued, you know, irritable, lack of concentration, lack of motiv motivation. You could be clumsy. And you could have a reduced sex drive for those that are, you know, long term having these effects. And I personally, until I got this band, because I'm going to keep talking about it here, I didn't know I was probably chronically fatigued. And I feel so much better finally getting the sleep that my body needs because I used to freaking sacrifice all the damn time. Okay, five hours. I got to go do A, B, and C. Anyways, the, the first side effect we're going to talk about is weight gain. And so... It's not completely, completely clear. Like there isn't an exact correlation that scientists could say, hey, if you don't sleep, you're going to gain weight. But there is a link between obesity and no sleep. And that's kind of interconnected. So they took, they took 21,000 adults over the course of three years who slept less than five hours and six hours. And they associated what lack of sleep does. It decreases leptin and elevates adrenaline. And those are both hormones that are responsible for hunger and anxiety, meaning your brain is getting triggered from, hey, I feel full. So that gets that doesn't get that gets affected and it doesn't work as well. Same thing with um, the artificial sweeteners, since we like to talk about food, um, they they bypass the, the hormones and they don't get activated in the system. Like high fructose corn syrup is super damn sweet, but your body can't recognize it that, hey, I'm eating sugary sweets. I'm going to get full. So, yeah. And just think, if you think about it, like it's, let's say you're not getting enough sleep. So you're up majority of, of the day. Just the fact that you're up for, for longer, I'm sure you're going to be more prone to, to eating more, to eating more calories. Just, just that in itself, just from like that kind of perspective, you're going to, you're going to gain weight just because you're going to eat more. Not necessarily burning more calories sitting around the house, but you're probably snacking more. You're more prone to, to snacking because, you know, instead of sleeping five hours or sorry, instead of sleeping the eight hours that you're in bed, now you're only sleeping for four or five. So guess what? You have a more chance of snacking. 
And it's kind of funny because low key when it was my first week doing travel nursing and you know, you don't work as much and you're just chilling back at home. Dude, I freaking spent so much money on food because I had nothing else to do. I just went, went out to go grab food constantly. It wasn't maybe sleep, but it's like also if you're bored at home and you're not just stimulating your brain with something, it's going to want to get stimulated because we are, we are dopamine fiends like nowadays. Our cell phones you know, stimulate our dopamine, food stimulates dopamine. We're like, you know, we're going to talk about delayed gratification, but man, we're just like fiending off dopamine rushes. Like if you're bored, you go at work and you swipe this damn phone, boom, dopamine just gets stimulated. So that could be, that should be a freaking cool study too, to see the side effects of like our current state of just, you know, app, app clicking and getting so stimulated, how that affects, um, consumption of calories and like obesity and stuff but right now we're just nurses peter we can't be doing studies you know yeah yeah so guys another effect is you're gonna get sicker easier so it actually decreases your your immune function you get sicker you're more prone to having the flu or the cold and a few episodes ago we talked about how sleep is important because it helps the t-cells stick to pathogens things better i'm not sure what the exact mechanism is but there are some hormones and some neurotransmitters that are released during our sleep that actually support our immune health and they actually promote T cell adhesion to these pathogens. True. And we're also going to talk about brain fog here, another side effect. Um, it impairs mental clarity, it causes poor concentration. Sometimes I feel like this effect, it feels like you're dreaming. So you're kind of watching the world from like a third eye view. And I had that before, man, where you're just like, it's almost like, you know, you're playing a video game with a third eye view, like Tom Clancy, and you just see yourself. I feel like lack of sleep sometimes does that. And it just creates poor mental, you know, ways of concentration. And also, as you know, REM stage three helps you convert those memories short term to long term. Yeah, like it's all freaking connected. Like it, it makes sense after you start connecting the dots. Just like I told you about the whole contact thing. Might as well bring it up because people are going to be like, well, what thing? So anyways. I freaking had pain in my eye, right? And it kind of felt like someone like punched me or something. And I've realized that I've been jeopardizing switching my contact solution because I don't feel like ordering the damn bottle and I haven't gone to Target. So I probably had like a little mini eye infection without even realizing it or just a buildup of protein, which causes cause irritation. Oh yeah, for sure. It's like you look at yourself, look at how you performed at work on the days where you had a full night's rest compared to a day where you know, you stayed up the night prior or, or you party, like your, your clarity is completely different. And that leads to like a prone to making mistakes and just poor patient satisfaction is poor, poor patient care. And also lack of sleep also can lead to depression just because you're not fully you when you're tired. So if that kind of makes you feel, you know, it makes you feel sad, it makes you feel shitty. So the less hours you get of sleep, the more shitty you feel, the more chances of your depression, because you think you're not getting en- enough done, your performance is slacking and trying to figure out what well, it's probably because you're not sleeping enough. And then also a lot of patients that have depression have insomnia. And when you we screen patients all the time in the hospital for it, and it's crazy how there's a correlation or they say, yeah, I only sleep four to six hours and it gets worse in the adults because they have to kind of, you know, pee frequently. It happens so often. And you might be that person too. You may not be old, but what do you do? You toss and turn and you just keep thinking in bed, you know? And it could be related to your nighttime routine. Like you can't just like lay in bed, swipe, 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 be like super freaking stimulated. And then you, you, you just think you could just turn off your phone and close your eyes and it'll, it'll be all good. No, you're just like, you know, you doing anything or you just finishing a workout and you have to unwind. You got to unwind before bed too. You know, you got to give yourself that, Hey, 30 minutes, no screen time. I've been reading a book, which helps me too. And it kind of like, eventually the book becomes like, I don't want to do this because I'm tired and it helps me fall asleep. So definitely keep, if you have insomnia, definitely have a better nighttime routine to ease into sleep because you have to ease into activities. Um, just like, for example, focus, right? Like, you know how like we're so stimulated nowadays that we just can't focus on one damn thing. Like how long does it take you to get like submerged into a task? It takes a while takes a while and then like oh okay you get a notification you check it again you put it down and you're 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 getting stimulated with tasks so you feel like you're accomplishing things but you ain't doing shit 
that damn task is still dragging on because you're not getting into that state of flow. Right. Yeah. Yeah, guys. And lack of sleep also promotes cortisol. So what cortisol does is actually ages your skin. It has an inverse reaction to collagen, which we know collagen is very important to, to have nice, healthy skin. A lot of these uh, skin therapy places or, or cream places, they, they say that their product promotes collagen because that will help our skin look nice and shiny, like nice and moist. And if there's high cortisol level due to lack of sleep, your collagen gets broken down. It's not, it does not get used as efficiently and it does not get promoted. And like Matt said before, lowers your sex drive. So sleep is important to us because it maintains our testosterone levels. A lot of times when people have issues getting erections, that's usually due to stress or lack of sleep. And you might not need, you know, a Viagra or some kind of a pill. You might just need to be getting a few more hours of sleep. And now that I'm thinking about it, so one, one thing, um, cortisol, right? So don't forget, guys, stage two is when cortisol gets decreased, it gets suppressed. And when it comes to sex drive, like it's interesting how, let's just say you're depressed. You're depressed because let's just say you have anxiety. Now that anxiety is, uh, you, you're too anxious to perform, let's just say in bed, and it lowers your sex drive. What if those things are all correlated just from freaking some sleep? It's, yeah, it's look at that. Look at Matt's name mentioned a bunch of problems that that are just due to a lack of sleep. You know, high cortisol, you know, stress. You're stressing about sleeping, and now since you're stressed about sleeping, you can't fall asleep. And now since you can't fall asleep, now you have anxiety in bed. You wonder why can I get it up? It's because you're just not sleeping, man. Just try some sleep. Try the non-pharmaceutical approach first before you do anything drastic pharmaceutical-wise, because a lot of times these pills are only temporary band-aids on the overall overlaying issue you got to fix yourself before you actually go to a doctor and request a kind of medication because it might be an internal issue not something that can be fixed by external med medication yeah fix yourself before you break yourself oh and yeah. um yeah, there you go and we're speaking of this ashram so this study from 2011 from the university of chicago shout out to shy town um they took a one-week period of decreasing these young men's uh, sleep to five hours and actually showed a decrease in that one week 10 to 15% of testosterone. So a lot. it is, it is. And we're not mentioning sleep apnea here. I feel like that's another problem to do. If you have sleep apnea, if you're snoring, you actually should go get um, a sleep study done or see if you could get some surgery or, you know, those cool devices. I don't even know what kind because I don't have that issue where they stick something up the nose because sleep apnea actually decreases um, oxygen to the brain. So I'm sure there's some freaking side effects there that we don't even know about. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 it's kind of funny because, you know, we kind of talk about this stuff. I feel like every single topic that we mention, every single little thing, there could be a study behind it or there's some research that we just don't freaking know about because healthcare is so damn like, it's a huge freaking bubble, man. It's hard to tap into. It's hard to learn about things. Um, but that's why we're here, right? Because we're spreading yep. those conversations, one conversation at a time. My man. I, I swear we're going to get a freaking shirt that just says that. And that's just, that's going to be our thing. That's good. That should be our slogan. One day. One day, one conversation. There you go. All right, Matt, you want to wrap it up here? I think. And yeah, wrap it up in bed. This episode. Sleep. I'm joking. I'm joking. See, I'm sleep deprived. Man. I'm talking out of my ass here. Yeah. And wet, um, dreams. Wet, yeah, wet dreams, you know, a bunch of jerking. Don't be jerking it. Yeah. The more sleep, the more wet dreams you're going to have in your life. Yeah, and if and if we're we're also wondering, me and PD, do women have wet dreams? So let us know about that. I'm curious. Those that stayed that long, I'm sure we're gonna get some funny ass messages, huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I'm not sure if they have wet dreams or not. We're about to find out after this episode. So we are gonna wrap this up, guys. So today we talked about that Chilean study in 2016. How if you're actually putting food labels that says high fat, high sugar on um, on products, there's actually a decrease in the consumption of those products. So America, if you're listening. Put some good labels on us because we as Americans have obesity. We're struggling that as a nation and we need that decrease. And when it comes to sleep, guys, sleeping less than six hours a day does affect you on a whole level. Ages your skin, testosterone, possible weight gain, depression. Everything is interlinked, guys. Don't sacrifice sleep for the hustle. The hustle is important, but you need to sleep in order to be an effective human with good focus, good concentration. So get your eight hours plus or seven or whatever it is. You know your body best. So get that in. Beautiful, Matt. More sleep, more wet dreams, more testosterone. I'll see, see you guys you. next week. I'll see you guys next week, guys. Peace out.